Hey, congratulations, you've completed your project. The only thing that's remaining now is a project closure report or an end project report. And I'm going to show you how to make the template for that report. I'm Stuart Taylor and I make videos about project management. If that's your thing, hit the subscribe button. Now let's get into that template. This is a work along session, so feel free to open up Word as well and start working on this with me. If you prefer though, there will be a version of this template that's downloadable. The link is gonna be in the description of the video, but I encourage you to watch the whole video so that you understand how to complete each section. I'm gonna use Word because there is sometimes a lot of detail that goes into these reports, so I'm just playing it safe here. Feel free to use any other tool that you prefer though, there is not necessarily a wrong way to do this. I'm gonna be a bit zoomed in as well, and the font is gonna be a little larger than usual. That's just so that people watching this on mobile devices can see clearly. Okay, let's get this cover page started. Just drop a few lines there, go to styles and select title. We'll put project, closure, report and then we'll select a larger size font maybe a 20 and put here project name reduce the font slightly and then put project manager and put your name in the box sponsor Put their name in the box. Date of report. And then put the date in whatever format is suitable to you. And then we go to insert, put a page break, and this is where we'll put our contents page. We go back to home, select heading one, all this contents and then go up to References, select Table of Contents, and pick any of these that you like. I'm gonna go with Automatic Table 2. And you see it's already looked up the contents there because, if you recall, I used Heading 1. This is looking up headings. Underneath the Table of Contents, or on a separate page if you prefer, we'll put a list of the reviewers on here because you might have a situation where somebody has to sign off these documents and you might want to keep a list of who and when they did that. So we'll go to insert, create a table, three columns, give it a few rows. You can always add more if you need them. Select a desirable table design. Uh, let's go for this one. And here we have name, role, date of Review. Now we go to insert again, page break, and now we finally get into the report itself. The first item we want to put in here is the project manager report. So we go to heading, heading one, sorry, and we put the title project manager's report. I'm just going to put a note here to summarize the projects performance from the PM perspective. When you actually start filling out this report with actual content, you might want to come back to the project manager's report last. If you complete the other sections of the report first, what will happen is you'll have those ideas and those thoughts at the front of your mind and you'll be able to come back and write this project manager's report a lot more easily. If you do the project manager's report first, you might find you end up having to come back and tweak it and amend it. The next part we're going to do is the review of the business case. So we put a header in again. And here you might want to put some statements around whether you've delivered the benefits that were expected, uh, if there are any other benefits to be expected after the project is closed. The key thing to keep in mind here is you're actually doing a comparison with the original business case and essentially looking back and saying, this is what we expected to do, and this is what we did. And I'll just put a note here that this will cover benefits achieved, 
benefits yet to be realized. And we'll include some deviations from the business case, if any. The next section is the review of objectives. So we'll put another header in. Again, there's a lot of comparison going on in this part with the business case and other earlier estimations from the start of the project. To make it as easy as possible for you to get this report created quickly, I'm gonna create a table that you can pretty much replicate, which will compare the original estimation and the final outcome. And I'll include a section on there as well. There'll be a column that's going to look at the impact of any change requests that have altered things as the project's gone on. So when we get to the section with the key milestones, if you find that something's been delivered later than expected, if there was a change request that explained that and will give context to that story, then it's useful to have that linked in. Okay, we're gonna to go to heading two now, which will create a subheading. Let's start off with costs. Let's insert a table by going to insert table. And this time we're going to put four columns. We'll give it a few rows. And we'll select the same table design that we used earlier. And here we're going to put original estimation, actual cost, variance, change request IDs. How you do this is up to you and based on the preferences within your organization. You could just put one line entry here to say, this is the original estimation for the budget of the project. This is what the actual cost was. Here's the variance. And here are the change request IDs that have impacted on that. On the other hand, you can go more granular. You could put the stages on there and say, this is how much it cost whilst we we're figuring out how we we're gonna do the project. This is how much it cost whilst we we're planning and designing it. This is how much it cost when we we're building it. This is how much it cost when we we're testing it and so on. Or you could do it a different way. You can go by, this is internal resource cost. This is external resource cost. This is suppliers and things and tools and materials. However you want to cut it, it's up to you. If you do decide to go into more detail than just having a single line entry, make sure to add a total row so that you can show what the total original estimation was, what the total actual cost is and what the total variance is. Okay, I'm now gonna copy this table. It's gonna be useful. Now we're gonna add another heading called key milestones. Okay, now we're going to paste that table in that we copied earlier. We're gonna select the first of the columns and right click on the table and go to insert left, insert left. And we'll put milestone name here. Okay, so we can select the table and go to table design and get rid of that total row. We don't need it on here. And we'll change original estimation to target date. Change this one to actual date. Variance, which you can record in days, weeks, months, even if you're in that situation. And again, we keep the change request IDs on here. When you're populating this section, make sure to include key events such as the end of stages, go live dates, release dates, handover dates, and so on. Okay, let's put another subheading in. Select heading two. We'll call this one scope. Again, we can paste that table in again if we choose to, or we can just write a new one. For this one, we're going to put high level requirement. You can go into a lot more detail, but you should have a requirements document that will have kept track of all of this. In this one, we'll put a simple statement of whether it's been achieved or not. We'll leave variance on here so you can explain the nature of any variance that has occurred. And again, we'll leave a section here for the change requests. Again, highlight the table, it's a table design and get rid of that total row. Next, we're gonna put a section for financial benefits. 
You've already had a section where you've talked a little bit about benefits, but what we're going to do in this part is actually break that down into a little bit more granular detail. Okay, I've pasted the table in from earlier and I'm going to add target benefit, actual benefit. We'll leave the variance and the change requests. Underneath this one though, we'll put a note table includes benefits realized so far. Now we'll select heading two again and we'll add a section called non-financial benefits. This time we can just have a straight copy of this table. By the way, I should mention that on the financial one, I did leave the totals row. So on this table, I'm just going to highlight the table again, go to table design and get rid of the total row. Again, you can put a description in here. It is a little different though from the financials. In this case, you might be saying something's going faster. Something's improved its quality. The content in the non-financial benefits table is going to vary a lot depending on the project. It could be that you made things faster, better, better customer experience, so on. It could be any kind of measure. So hopefully if you log your target benefit that you had from the start of the project against your actual and you can explain the variance, it still works. There is an argument to say that quality and risk should appear on here as well. Uh, I've typically found that they're not actually really wanted in many organizations. Quality gets covered a little bit later on and risk, people only really seem to care about that at this stage if there are open risks or risks that are being transferred to the organization. So that will be addressed a little bit later on as well. So now we're going to click into the page and add heading one. And this will be review of the products. So we go to heading two again to create a subheading and we put quality. And in this section, you can add details of quality expectations and whether they were met. We'll also put explain any deviations. Okay, we'll put heading two on here again and call this handover of products. And here we're going to include a statement from the business owner. This will just be a straight copy of any email that they've sent across to you where they've confirmed receipt of the products and they give their feedback on yes it's fit for purpose or no it's not we've got some outstanding actions. Speaking of which then we'll put a heading two and summary of outstanding for follow-up actions. Now what you could do here is you can either write a narrative around this. What I actually prefer to do is to insert another table, you'll be shocked to hear, which will have enough columns to include the action itself, its owner, and its target date. I'll go to the table design then, so the same format we've used before. Action, action, owner, target date. Okay, then we go to heading one, risks and issues. We're going to put a simple table in this section. It's going to explain any open risks and issues that have had to transfer either because time ran out, they couldn't be completed as part of the project or because the project itself has created new risks and issues that are being handed across to the business along with the outputs of the project. Okay, so let's go to insert, select table, three columns, select the same table design that we've used earlier, risk or issue, new owner, and date transferred. 
don't forget, you don't get to just chuck this over the fence at the new owner. They need to receive it. They need to be the right person for it. And they need to confirm that they're going to take care of it going forwards. I'm just going to put a little narrative there at the top. Just in case we ever forget. Okay, go back to heading one again for the new section. And we're going to call this key lessons learned. And again, we're going to insert a simple table again. We'll call this lesson recommendation. I should add whilst we're doing this, we're only putting in the key lessons learned here. There should be a full lessons learned library somewhere else in your records. So you just need to have a hyperlink at the end of this table pointing back to wherever that exists. On that basis, you don't need to replicate the entire contents of the lessons into this table. Just make sure that you include a fairly high level description of what the lesson is, what the recommendation from that lesson is. And I'm gonna add some more content onto this as well. You don't need to do this, this is optional. But I'm gonna add repeat and avoid. Underneath the table, I'm gonna make a recommendation to add a hyperlink to the full lessons log. Okay, we're nearly at the end. And what we've got so far would usually be sufficient for most places but I'm gonna include a section that sometimes gets overlooked. We're gonna make sure that if you've done a good job on this, no one ever forgets it. We're gonna add a section here called sponsor review stroke feedback. And what I suggest you do here is email your sponsor for content to go here. What you want the sponsor to do is to give their impressions at this moment in time of how the project has gone. If things have gone particularly well, if you've overcome significant challenges, or if you've overperformed and overachieved, you want that to be called out in here. If things could have been done better from their perspective, it's worth adding here as well. Don't forget the purpose of this report is to help the organization and future project managers to learn as they deliver their projects as well. So if there's a lesson to be learned just from the sponsor's perspective here, it's worth collecting it. Don't forget we can learn just as much from things that went wrong as we can from things that went right. Now for a little bit of formatting. So we'll give this one its own page. So we'll go to the, we'll go to start of the line and go to insert page break. We'll do the same for key lessons learned. Give it its own page. Same for risks and issues. You may want to change the spacing between these things as you uh, as you adapt your own template. Review of objectives. Give that its own page as well. I think the project manager's report and the view of the business case can fit together, but feel free to give them a page break as well if you want to reviewers and table of contents. Click on the table of contents and press the update table. Select update entire table. And there you go, you've got your table of contents built. And there you have a project closure report. If you have any opinions on anything that can improve this report, please let me know in the comments. I'm happy to learn from you. I hope that this report's useful to you. It will cover the majority of things that will come up at the end of a project. If you've got some sort of exceptional and unusual circumstances taking place at the close of your project, and this report isn't quite fit for purpose for you, reach out to me on social media, and if I've got the capacity, I'll do what I can to help you out. If this has been helpful to you, then give the video a like, and I'll catch you next time.